Receive the joy of your glory, giving thanks to God, who has called you into the heavenly kingdom. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth earth, peace to people of goodwill. We We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give give you thanks thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, only only begotten begotten Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith, to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, 
the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're celebrating Divine Mercy Sunday. Let's break that down. So divine, is that's God. We're talking about God's mercy. But mercy itself, I want to go a, a little bit deeper into what's going on there. The first is, when we think about mercy, is that it's not just an emotion, and not just even an intellectual response. So I can look out at something, and I can feel compassion, or I can feel pity, but mercy is always deliberate. Mercy is always an act of the will. It's possible for me to feel compassion for someone or pity for someone and still not be merciful, still not do any acts of mercy. And so mercy is always a decision. It's always an act of the will. And when we talk about mercy, this act of how it might be done, we might want to talk about it in two ways. And in both instances, it's, it's sort of we're getting rid of something. So we might talk about mercy sort of in the moral sphere, the ethical sphere. So there's something bad going on, and we get rid of it. Right? So someone is, is suffering. When we think about you know, the corporal works of mercy, the spiritual works of mercy, right? these things that we're able to do, there's an absence of goodness, and, and it's a badness. And so we want to undo that. And we hear in the second psalm, uh, I'm sorry, in the, in the psalm, in the second uh, stanza that we heard, right, I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. It's one of the ways God exhibits his mercy, the forgiveness of sins and giving us the help that we need along the way, is that there's, there's something sort of missing, and I think we can all, I can say this pretty universally, is we all probably notice those things in ourselves and in the world where we need God where we need that mercy. And that's a good thing. But we can also talk about, I think, maybe an ontological mercy. So nothing is wrong per se, but there's something new given. And when we look at creation, for example, right, you know, look back at Genesis, right, there was nothing missing per se, but God brought it in. There was something new. 
And it wasn't just the absence of some badness, but there was something really qualitatively new and different. We hear St. Paul talking about this with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In God's great mercy, he gives us a new birth to a living hope. A new birth to a living hope. There's something different here. It's not just the forgiveness of sins, not just this absence of badness, but this mercy that offers something new and something good. And so when we look at today's gospel, we see both of these things going on in what Christ has entrusted to the church. Right, so he comes to Thomas, and Thomas has this, this unbelief, this negative thing. And, and what is, what is Jesus' mercy here? He comes back just for Thomas. He comes back and offers this faith to Thomas, removing that unbelief. Right, we hear that he's breathing on, on the apostles, and they're given the ability, his ability, to forgive sins, to remove the injustice, to remove those things, that act of mercy. But it's not just there. We hear about that new creation. We hear about that mercy that adds something new. And what he says is, receive the Holy Spirit. And peace be with you. These things that the world cannot give, these things that are not just a mere absence of other things, but are in fact something positive and something good and something merciful in and of themselves. And so when we talk about this being Divine Mercy Sunday, it's true. It's true that God is, is merciful, right? The psalm beats this over our head, His mercy endures forever. And as, if you ever take the opportunity to, to look through the scriptures, try to find a page that doesn't mention God's mercy. I, I don't want to like put money on it in case I am wrong, but you're going to have a really hard time doing it. right? Over and over again we hear about God's mercy. And I might fall into the trap of just thinking that it's, it's removing those negatives. And I can get sort of caught up inwardly in, I get this wrong, I can look out, I can see X, Y, Z is bad. And yeah, we need God's mercy there. But goodness is not just the absence of bad. That's, I mean, nothing is the absence of bad as well. God is good, and God is being, and when we talk about God's mercy, what I'm striving for in my moral life, what I'm striving for in my intellectual life, what I'm striving for ultimately in my spiritual life and in my prayer life, is to put on, as Paul says to the Ephesians, to put on that new person in Christ. God's mercy gives us something new, and it gives us something good. And taking the time to pray, taking the time to do those acts of mercy that are directed, again, not towards myself, but towards the other, bring me into the fullness of that communion with the God who offers himself fully and completely and always in mercy. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and, and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Casting doubt aside, we praise our Lord and God and humbly ask for the answer to our prayers and those of the whole world. Our response today is hear our prayer. For the church stronghold of trust in the everlasting mercy of God, that the gift of faith be generously shared with all who search for it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who answer the call to a life of civic service, that they may be ever mindful of the sanctity of all life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our armed services and for all who suffer as a result of war and violence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those named in our book of remembrance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish community, especially for Mary Ann Geyer, and for all those infected with COVID-19, and for our beloved who are recently deceased, Father Paul Dom, Rosalie Gordon, Richard Mansfield, Robert McCann, Josephine Poznanski, Henrietta Skip Felusiak, Peg Donnellan, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those intentions known only in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and loving God, you raised your Son from death in the tomb. Hear us and give answer through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a 
similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Bring your hand and feel the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one announcement today. Uh, please do watch for updates uh, on our Facebook page uh, and also on the website, which is www.saintrosalie.com. Everything spelled out, saintrosalie.com. Happy Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.